dreams. I've been talking about the last couple of times about using your dreams as source material for uh, for film or for TV, um, you know, for scripts, for stories, um, whatever you want to do with it, you know, for comic books. So for me, uh, this was just something I started out doing of thinking of as it'll be a film script, a short film script, 11 pages, short film script. Um, but so what, what started, how it started was that I just had a dream, all right, as most of, uh, you know, that most of my, um, about 80 to 90% of my uh, story ideas come from a dream. After I've had a real relaxing dream, the last few minutes or half an hour of that, you know, dreams can go on forever and you realize it's only been a half an hour, 20 minutes, you've been asleep. So, uh, so one of the dreams was called the tortoise. So I had this dream where I was seeing things through another person, as you do in dreams. And, um, and I was, you know, a little girl, right? Weird, of course, but that's what dreams are. They're, they're whatever you, you find yourself in, in a landscape of things. And I found, found myself as a little girl somewhere on an island, right? So when I was having this dream, I don't remember the dream too well now because it's been two years or so. Uh, and so, um, but I do remember getting up and going, that's a great idea for a story, right? So I thought, hmm. Let's write something down. So I write down a little outline of the story called the tortoise. It wasn't called the tortoise at the time, but it became called the tortoise. So here's how the tortoise goes. So this is a story outline of that based on that dream. So it goes, when I was a little girl, I wanted a tortoise so much because I had read that they could live for hundreds of years. So when I was able to, when I grew up to travel here to Indonesia, because I'd read of an obscure tribe which had a legend about a shaman who had the power to turn tortoises to tortoise, tortoise, to humans for a short time. So when I was having a dream, there was no mention of um, Indonesia or anything like that. So I actually put that, I went and researched, taught, um, you know, what a, what a, the, um, what a tortoise is like. And what, it, because I remember, you know, like um, tortoise is something of a delicacy in the past. And even sometimes now in Fiji, where they're coming, or in the Pacific Islands, where they're becoming extinct, extinct. So I, I, I researched that, and I'll tell you that in a minute. So the story goes on. You see, when I first fell in love with you, you were the same age as me, and I thought because of similarity in our, in our age, we would get on well together. And at the time, and at that time, I got to spend with you now, would stay with me for my entire life, and then that, when it came to, for me to die, that you would pass on, down, be passed on down on to my children, their children and their children's children. So on until we join together once more in death. So this is just an outline of what this dream's about. This, you know, this just sort of a quick paragraph detailing how this this young girl is thinking about future of her legacy of her children, 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 and why she wanted a tortoise because she felt that she could pass on this tortoise to her children. So he goes, I saw the cuts on your back, your shell. I didn't know what what they would do that. Well, Sorry, excuse me. Ugh, something in my eye. So you go, I saw the cuts on your back, your shell. I didn't know that they would do that, nor that it would be so deep. I cried when I saw it. You're still in your tortoise form. They tell me it was all part of the ritual to turn you into a human. I'm so sorry. I can tell it hurts. I can see the pain in your eyes, but please understand that I didn't mean it for it didn't mean it for it to be this way for you. They tell me that it will heal. And when it, come, when it does, the message will remain for hundreds of years until your end. So she's talking about the situation where I was talking, you know, early on talking about this, um, this ritual, he has to, this tortoise has to go through to become a human. And so she's talking about how in this dream she's having, um, you know, she's gone through this place to Indonesia and the ritual recommends that she, there's all these signs, uh, glyphs and things be cut into her back, into the tortoise's back. So that this ritual, you know, you can turn into a human being. So before that, however, you will, as a man, spend time with me and talk, if you're able. Or if not, listen, because I never imagined you to be such a handsome man. I mean, I fell in love with you as a tortoise, but look how beautiful you look as a man. They told me that you would have this light brown skin because of the island I found you on. The natives there have such bronze tones. But I don't think that after these 10 years that later that you would turn into a into such a handsome person. Tomorrow morning at daybreak, you will return to your tortoise form and I'll forget what you look like. So I have bought my camera to take a photo. I will warn you now, it has a flash, so be prepared and don't squint. 
I want to have a reminder of you for the rest of my life as I have you near me. So she's talking about this, um, you know, we're so, memories, like she's talking about her memory that once he goes back to her, um, to his natural form again as a tortoise, back from the human being, back through the ritual, back into tortoise form again. So she's got like a, a 12 hour, um, you know, a few hours to spend with this, with this, uh, because of the ritual with a human being. Uh, you may remember, um, so she wants to take a photo of her, of, the, of this human who's who's been her you know a part of her life as a tortoise forever as she can you know she's talking about 10 years you remember that i got you when i was eight years old so she's 18 now i researched and read everything i could about your kind all the different types and places you live or travel i found all sorts of myths all sorts of myths i found all sorts of legends and myths there are so many will you stay with me tonight i would like to talk to you about them or are you too angry at me for putting you through this ordeal? Thank you. I would love to dance. So that's basically the I, um, the whole um, film. I mean, so the seeing it through this young girl's eyes in this dream. All right. She's talking about how she was uh, eight years old. She was, as a child, she got a tortoise. And now 10 years later, she's researched everything. And the thing is that um, I went into a huge research about this. I spent... I don't know, maybe a week or two, just looking at all different, uh, different um, characteristics, different types of tortoises, and um, and turtles in the Pacific, you know, in Asia, and they travel how they travel for years, uh, even a century, right? Through through, through the waterways, they go and um, um, they go on to the natural habitat, and they lay their eggs, and then they return leaving the, um, um, the eggs behind to hatch and they return back to the water. And then the uh, the young baby uh, turtles are left to themselves to defend for themselves. And of course, some of them die and some of them survive and they return back to the water and can they carry on with their life. And so she's talking, you know, so she's talking about how she is, is a, you know, in your dream, you're the, you're the looking through and you're the, uh, your POV, right? your point of view in the situation. And so she's seeing all this and she's talking to this person who's become a human being for a few hours and she wants a picture and she's so, um, you know, she's she's in love with this, you know, she's realized that she's gone through all this process. Now she's in love with this character, uh, this turtle that's become, the tortoise that's become her, I'm oh, sorry, that's become her, um, uh, have become a human being. And, you know, she's realized that she's in love with this person. Even though it's been a short time, but she's looked after him. So I went and researched this whole back matter. And back matter is what you, you know, your researchers, what the characters are like, what they do. And so here's my back matter for the tortoise comic book. All right, so Amber, three years, at three years, first once a turtle while on a, a family holiday at, a, at Fiji Resort. So, so basically, this is kind of like, it was a real thing for me. I actually, um, when I was in Fiji on Sunnyside Island, our home base um, in Fiji was um, Nandovi, Koravuto. That's our tribal lands there, uh, I guess, if you can call it tribal. But it's our home base for 100 years, for over 100 years. Uh, and so, um, you know, I, I noticed this young couple at that time, well, not young couple, probably in the late 30s, early 40s. And um, they were, you know, um, Indian couple, uh, Indian guy, sorry, Indian lady, beautiful Indian lady with a bit, um, handsome young white man, a European man from uh, Aussie, I could tell by the accent, just there on our beach, uh, you know, on Sunny Island Beach, just, you know, hanging out. And I was like, yeah, I could use this as a parent in this, in this story, right? So there we go. So back to that. So it goes, um, Amber, three years at three years, first one's a turtle, one a holiday, um, family holiday at a Fiji resort. And I write down, it has to be a um, green turtle to fit in with the story. It's a herbivore. So I don't even know that. So I, when I researched it, you know, I, I found that, um, that they were, you know, turtles are herbivores. This is what happens when you research into your storyline. You learn a lot more about your character, um, you know, about what you are doing or what the basis of the story is because you don't want to just write something just off the top of your head if you don't know what, you're trying to do and it's always so amazing that, you know like the the age we live in that we just go google and we'll find it you know do a search on online on firefox or whatever and just find 
anything you need to know about turtles. So then we go back and goes, so she wants it first at three years old. Uh, and then um, we go on, the story would, you know, when we go into script, we'll tell you what, what happens with that. So then again, we jump to about six years, three years later, Ember at six years um, gets the turtle from the Fiji Resort Beach. Now green turtle, um, so I'm putting a little of, um, background here for the, um, the artist. Um, so re remarkably, green, green sea turtles are the only herbivorous species. So it's only the green sea turtles, right? The other ones are like, they eat fish and stuff. Their jaws are perfectly adapted for eating seagrass, seaweed and algae. With their serrated saw-like beak, they can scrape the algae off rocks and tear grasses. In fact, green sea turtles are crucial for maintaining our coral leaves by preventing overgrowth of algae. There is even a seagrass species known as turtle grass because in areas like the Caribbean, the green sea turtle eats exclusively. This is from Sarah Matthews, uh, What Do Turtles Eat? That was on a blog. So, so then we get jump back to Amber, early teens, start studying up on turtles. Then we jump again. Amber, early teens, falls in love with Billy. We'll talk about that later. Amber, a couple months later, um, Billy breaks up with her and she's crushed and so decides she doesn't want anything to have anything to do with boys anymore. Amber, 18 years, falls in love with her best friend, a girl from college, Kirsten. Amber, at 27 years, finally decides to go to Indonesia as part of an habitat. So remember I said she was 18 and she went in the dream, right? But here, when I'm writing that backstory, I'm realizing that, okay, look, I need to do a timeline that's a bit more specific to what I'm trying to get at, uh, to tell a better story. And as you see, um, I went into the fact that she fell in love with Billy, Billy dumps her, she decides, well, you know, she's going to go, um, hang, you know, she falls in love with her friend Kirsten, a college buddy, her best friend at 18. Um, okay. Right, so we go, here we go again. Um, so back to Amber, 27 years, finally decides to go to Indonesia as part of an Habitat for Humanity thing. So this is more research, right? Researching into, okay, how does Amber get to uh, Indonesia? She's just a student. Um, what is she going to do? What sort of person she is? So she realized that she's a quite a caring person because she's building homes for for people who are un underprivileged or can't afford to. So she goes as part of, um, she goes to Indonesia as part of Habitat for Humanity. Right, and um, for the cause, right, uh, with Karen, and um, so she goes with Karen and uh, um, and see um, to see if the ritual she learned of years ago is actually true or actually real. She takes her turtle, right. The ritual is performed, but it's very bloody. Remember, I said about the cuts in the back of the tortoise, how the um, you know it's very deep, and she's like really ashamed of herself for this. She's really, um, she's really, um, down because she felt that she's actually hurt her tortoise that she's you know cared for her pet that she's really really you know has been her coffin coffin confidant in the years um you know she's been she's been six years old she's she was able, able to get it so we'll go back there into that when we get to this um the actual script the ritual is performed but it's very bloody and shocks both amber and kirsten okay so then i do a little um further research into the deity of animals, into Indonesian deity of animals. So the ritual is, involves um, ritual involves prayer and offerings, but also cutting into the shell of the tortoise. This means a very sharp diamond blade tipped uh, drill cuts um, bits, cuts ancient serpents in the shell. This leaves very painful and large cuts into Marlo. I'll talk about Marlo in a, in a minute and why I called him Marlo, the turtle, tortoise, tortoise. When he changes, um, yeah, so this leaves a very, very painful and light cut and cuts into Marlo when he changes into a human. The wounds were dressed with local uh, plant and spices, which cause it to heal and seal within a few hours as Amber waits for him to recover from the injuries. He does not talk during this period as it is too painful. So, um, so I'm, this is just a background, right? So that's from the Indonesian deity of animals, um, and how they, um, you know, further research into the story. So incantations and inscriptions. So I'll leave that there for just to come up with something for my, um, for the artist to say, hey, you decide um, what um, what you think is going to be there. Have a look into the different um, 
designs uh, and rituals that Indonesians use specifically, because every every indigenous group in the world has their own art style, own uh, encryptions, incantations. Everything's in, in, um, individual to the group of where the people live, and um, you know, indigenous to them. All right, so Amber um, Kirst, Kirsten is upset and leaves mid ritual and returns to their shack at which they are staying at. Uh, Amber stays behind and watches the rest of the ritual and is surprised to see the turtle change into a young uh, male of 21 years. Amber feels so sad by the ordeal that the male has gone through, the, through that. She asks for his forgiveness. She for, explains that she, has, she just once wanted to meet him and to talk face to face with him as she has had him for so long. Right, so she's had him for about six years, and she's now 27 years old. So she, oh, sorry. I think that was a picture frame. Um, right, so she's, yeah, so she's had him for about 21 years, right? And so he's 21 years now, so she's had him since she was a little, a little tur turtle, baby tortoise, uh, turtle. And so she feels so sad, right? So she just said she's... You know, she didn't. Want, um, she's really sad and by and you know hurt by the fact that she's he's had to go himself through this transformation to become a turtle. So the, the tur turtle man, right, tells her his name, Marlo, and that he knows everything about her. He he had he has shared her life and loves and cannot um, cannot not forgive her. So she asks us, um, if he would dance with her, and they do. So this is way back to the uh, to the dream again, where the dream ends, where she goes. We you know. If she would, if he would dance with her, right? So she let, later ends up sleeping with him and under some coconut trees on the beach. All right, so that has to do with a lot with what's about to come about the century, century thing. Okay, so because he's a human now, all right. So we carry on with that. So nine, uh, okay. Kirsten, Amber, and Kirsten stand. Um, excuse me. Amber and Kirsten stay in Indonesia with Habitat for Humanity and help build homes with the locals and also other travelers and tourists who have come to help build homes. All right, uh, for the you know for the community. Yeah. Nine months later, we we are in hospital and we see Amber and Bird nurse in bed, nursing a slightly dark caramel skinned boy, as a pride Kirsten watches with a hand resting on Amber's shoulder. Now, um, so now she's a baby. Due to her uh, interaction uh, on that night with uh, Marlo, she has an addiction. So, and she ends up nine months later with pregnant. Okay, so let me just get to the bottom of this thing. So remember, um, the turtle tells her that his name is Marlo. Marlo here is um, I've researched in the name I, because when I when I name characters in my comics or my film scripts or anything I write I look into the meaning of the of the name because it's really important to because that sort of like helps um, me develop what the character is going to be like whether you know if he's a nice guy if he's a bad guy because a lot of people's names describe what their parents want that child to be like right and so on and like my name's Rising Sun right the trans English generation of my name is Rising Sun that's why our uh, comic book company is called Rising Sun. When I first started Rising Sun Comics, New Zealand, small print, was way back in 2007. I called Rising Sun after my own name. And later on, as you know, uh, we're part of a worldwide um, a company called Rising Sun Comics. You know, and you can find them on risingsuncomics.com. So, you know, I joined up with them around about 2010, 2012, because we had the same name. But it's very important for me um, being called, you know, that's why um, our division here in New Zealand is part of them, even though we're called Plunge Studios uh, and Plunge Enterprises. We also carry the uh, when we create comics for Rise, specifically for Rise and Com Sun Comics, we call it Rise and Sun Comics Oceania, which basically means the Pacific Island and, and New Zealand. And so we use New Zealand um, stories to be part of that. And so this is this one, this story here, the tortoise, is part of that, the Oceania part. All right, so Marlo. Is it so the trans, uh, yeah, the meaning behind the name Marlow? This is the Pacific Island um, name. Uh, Marlow is an, an idealist who needs to be appreciated for his true worth, to be liked, and for others to let him know what this is so. Well, um, to let him know what that this is so. The more he feels loved and supported, the more he he will give the best of himself, and this applies to all spheres of his life. He can't stand conflict and is happiest in an environment of love, affection, and harmony. He's a perfectionist at heart, but can 
at heart, which can make him very demanding in a friendship as in love. And he tends to need a new address book quite regularly. As for the long silences, don't worry, he still loves you. He's just forgotten to tell you. So that's a, that's basically, you know, interpretation of the name Milo. All right, so now let's go to the story outline. Uh, I'm sorry, the film, the actual um, comic book script that, you know, I ended up writing after I, um, after all that background work, after the dream and all that. So here we go. So what I, so I did a um, research into where the green turtles live, right? And so I came up with page one, Dusk, Vunavadra Island, Yasawa Islands Group. Panel one. Full, full, uh, full page panel, just, to, you know, because it's good to start off with a, with a very large, uh, you know, splash page, as we call them, just, just beautiful, you know, sunset, you know, dusk, and so a bird's eye view of Navadra uh, Island, and so I put a little um, re um, reference there for whoever's writing this to say this is what the island looks like, here are the photos of the island, here's the map of the island, here's pictures of, a, of dusk, so that there's information for the artist to go back and go, oh yeah, this is what this needs to be, this would be beautiful sunlight here, there's the islands, there's the coconut trees, all this is a resort there. And so, yeah, so a caption, Navadra Island, a.k.a. Vunavadra Island, off the coast of Vanua Levu, Fiji Island. So this is like, Fiji is, of, um, there's two main islands in Fiji, Viti Levu and Vanua Levu. Uh, our home is in Viti Levu, which is the larger one. And um, Vanua Levu is a bit of a, uh, kind of like a strip, whereas ours is like a bit of a round one. And so we kind of live at the bottom uh, of the island um, on an area called Solisali in Nandobi, Korobuto. Uh, Nandobi uh, has a silent N, so you, it's spelled like N A uh, C um, Nandobi C O V I uh, N A C O V I, but there's a A N D. So C C kind of has this N D instead of like a C. So Nakovi, you look at that on the bus and you go, where is that? And then people will tell you it's actually Nandobi, and so you find it. And I've had that trouble trying to catch a bus in Fiji during. Which bus is ours? Especially if you go back after 10 years and you go, uh, um, sorry, which bus do I catch, sir? They go, oh, shouldn't you know? I go, yeah, well, um, I'm looking for Nandovi. Oh, that's the that's that's the bus there, but it's like, it's not Kovi. Yeah, that's how it's spelled in Fijian, but it's Nandovi. That's how we say it. Okay, so back to the script. So page two now. Be be dusk, beach external, half page of a beach with young girl looking out into the ocean. This is the first time we meet the unnamed little girl, um, little three-year-old girl, Amber. She is what can be classed as cute, with slight pink chubby cheeks. Uh, sandy blonde, curly wavy hair. She wears a knee-length uh, flowing white floral, uh, flowery um, hair, um, skirt, slip with a uh, large, and I, I kind of like, I put that in there because when my when, when I, my um, little sister, when she was young, she used to wear these beautiful floral uh, dresses she was cute so there was no sleeves so there was like a slip and there was like um wavy at the bottom and so you you know you always write what you know and so i, I you know there's photos of my sister wearing these uh, cute dresses when she was like five and six and three and four and so i thought i'll put this in there and um so yeah so she's wearing uh she wears a knee length flowing white floral um flowery skirt slip with a large uh, sun hat that is too large for her hat she's standing on a beach watching the tide go out the last 300 meter um, long beach has golden white sand. This, uh, the island beach is where turtles lay their eggs. The banks of the, um, let me find my space here. The banks of the beach has coconut palm trees and large local trees and fauna. So, you know, just basically making sure that I give enough detail because this is just a splash, you know, another big page of details. Um, so, you know, it's got to be nice and it's got to be, you know, inviting. Um, okay, it's almost dusk, so there's, excuse me. It's almost dusk, so there there needs to be a large, and I've got photos of dusk at of Fiji. It's got the most beautiful sunsets in Fiji because of tropic. Uh, um, equator and stuff like that. Um, okay. 
Right, so it's almost dusk, so there needs to be a large sun slowly descending on the far end of this ocean. There are all these tiny baby turtles heading towards a low tide, trying to trying their best, um, trying to catch the best wave that will wash them back onto the... Oh, they're trying to fight against the wave. Uh, trying to best the wave uh, that will wash them back onto the oceans, uh, onto the beach. So, they, they, you know, they're struggling to get out there, basically. Um, some are still pushing their way out of the out of the sand. Others are sticking their heads out. There are so many of them, hundreds, all across the beach, but none near Amber. So, caption. Navadra Bay Island, aka Vinavadra Island, um, Part of those Yosava groups of Fiji of, Fiji, of islands off the coast of Vanuatu, Fiji Islands. So this is just making sure that everybody knows this is the same beach. Caption: When I was a little girl, I wanted those daughters so much. The first time I saw them was on a beach. My dad had taken mum and me on a holiday. I was only three years old. There were all these baby turtles coming out of the shell, eggs their mothers had laid. I remember wanting one so badly, so bad. Uh, all these. Um, Babies digging themselves out of the sand uh, deep underground. There's a local worldwide, a worldwide fund, um, Fijian man, who had been telling me all these interesting new information that green, um, the green sea turtle, about the green sea turtle and about the behavior and how they migrate and then the females return to lay the eggs, like a true circle of life. Carrying with the caption. So she's narrating the story. I remember when my parents said no, when I wanted one even and when I remember when my parents said no I wanted one even more so when we got back home my mum downloaded books on turtles for children on my iPad there's so many things I didn't know but the most important thing I read was that they could live for hundreds of years so that's panel one panel two the same little girl now walking at the same beach but now six years old a little um, six years old, a little, um, sorry, six years old and wearing jeans with uh, with a man, her father, 40, 40, 40 standing next to her. Amber is looking up at her father. Because of my nagging every year and every school holiday, my parents decided to return to Navajo Island again for another holiday after three years. I was six years old and two, six years and two months old. For months I had been nagging and pouty and whining about winding a turtle and making sure when we went, we went, uh, we went back to where it was, went back when it was, sorry, and making sure we went back when it was birthing season. Amber, and she's talking. So, Papa, are you sure I'm not allowed a tortoise? Oh, sorry, she goes, Papa, are you sure I'm allowed a tortoise? Sure, sure sweetheart. Father goes, you've been wanting one for a very long time, and I think you're much more responsible now than you were when we first came to this island all those years ago. And Amber goes, okay, uh, Papa, question. Yeah, did I really cry when you and Mama wouldn't let me um, keep the tortoise when I was six? So then we go into page three, and we break into four panels. Um, father's close up, and we go on about this. So, and you just carry on and carry on, um, you know, and I carry on with the story about that. So, as you can see, you know, like you can basically, you know, just a simple, simple dream, just a quick, simple dream, you know, supernatural fantasy. And you can research into it and do a you know, background to building on the character, building on what what um, what, you, you know, their whole life, 27 whole years almost of this one character from the age of three to 27 in a short story and you're trying you know and i'm and i'm looking at this i'm thinking well i only had a little tiny dream but i wrote it down and i thought this would make a great uh, uh comic book just a one shot 22 pages and or when i first started 11 uh 11 page short film set on a beautiful beach and then we come back to her at home and then we transfer back over to indonesia another beautiful place and then we turn back into new zealand and you know uh, she's back home having a baby and then we, you know, and then the, her lineage carries on. So it's, it's, um, you know, it's kind of, uh, um, you know, dreams are amazing that way. If you can utilize it, and I always utilize my dreams, I always force myself awake. But I remember a, a dream that I think that is interesting, um, you know, sci-fi, fantasy, whatever, uh, past, future, uh, you know, time travel. I quickly note it down 
uh, turn on my computer, write it down, and just, you know, leave it for a little while. And then let that story uh, gestate in my brain, and I come up with ideas, research, and look at um, developing the characters this way. So this was going to be part of an anthology, and then I decided, well, no, I don't, don't want to put it part of the anthology. What I'll do, I'll look at getting an artist to um, just do a, uh, you know, to do a, um, to work on this, and just from all these different characters. And and I'm probably going to turn this into, um, I had an idea to just make a normal standard um, animated kind of looking, a ca uh, cartoony looking comic book, but now I'm thinking I might um, look at getting some, um, because of this, you know, because of the nature of the story uh, and the fantasy and supernatural um, idea of the story, concept of it, I'm probably going to get a mango artist to have a look at it. Hopefully we can get it done, maybe a year, two years, maybe, but it'll be a standalone short story, you know, a single issue, one shot. But it's, you know, um, there's more, I guess, I could write on it, um, but I'll see how it develops. But, you know, so far I think I've done about 11 pages, which will be uh, 20 pages, actually, I can see here. And it's left with, um, yeah, so it tells you this whole background here that I've left. There's a big, huge, at page 19, just um, going into that. But it just becomes, you know, I've already written how it's going to go. And, and I've put a note here, uh, the next lot of pages will be based in Indonesia. So we'll need lots of background images from Indonesia. I have some data images already, just need to write the script so leaving notes by myself and always leave notes because uh, you know you can forget things I tend to forget things because of my injuries head injuries concussions and so I always try to write down as soon as I um, remember what I'm talking about or what I've come up with so that's me for today guys um, yeah I just thought I'd let you know how I do it uh, because I've been talking about it for so long um, and yeah hopefully you found something interesting in this and Maybe it's inspired you to, you know, utilize some of the dreams that you already had or notes you've taken down. And yeah, it's, um, you know, there's so many artists out there looking for work at this time. And maybe you'll be able to find some. Uh, DeviantArt's a great place. Of course, there's news of comic book writers and readers. Um, I think creators page. Um, you might be able to find some people there. Uh, they might be interested, you know. Try, uh, you know, whatever idea you have, there's nothing stopping you from doing what you want to do apart from yourself and of course the internet makes life so much easier um, to reach out to artists that might that you might want to work with and I've done that and Incredible's been part of that 